Hello and welcome back to The Daily Brew, the devotional where every day we try a new brew and see what God is brewing for us in the Bible. Yes, it's cheesy, but it's true. And today is a day to celebrate. If you have been on us, or on us, on the journey with us from the beginning, you have just hit day 200. Oh my goodness, we have hit a massive milestone today. Congratulations to you all if you have been joining us from the beginning. Now, if you're just tuning in today, I want to encourage you, go back to the beginning. First of all, it's a lot more of Harry and he does a significantly better job than I do. But also, it's about the journey through the Bible. Harry always talks about it and I believe it too. The Bible is a meta-narrative. There is so much that you can get from the whole Bible and the goal is that we would finish the Bible in a year or 13 months, depending on how you're going. Great, great stuff if you are here with us on day 200 though. And I just wanted to take a moment and celebrate you. What a huge achievement, what a huge milestone. And let's get into the uh, Bible today because we are here for the Bible. So we're gonna be looking today at our scriptures. They are Proverbs 17, verse 15 to 24. Romans 5 verse 12 to 21 and Amos chapter 8 and chapter 9. Quickly though, before we get into the Bible, we've got to try our brew. And if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see I've propped it up on a little candle because this tiny little twinings box is a cute little tea box and it's got a tea called lemon and ginger. Now I'm interested to try this because I've actually never in my life that I can remember have had a lemon and ginger or a lemon, honey and ginger tea when I've not been sick or losing my voice. So it's gonna be my first experience where I'm having this without any medicinal reason. I'm having it for the taste of it, for the joy of it. And I'm not sure how I feel about it, but it was in my tea cupboard and I'm gonna be honest, I am seriously running low on tea flavors, tea variations and so I thought you know what why not I'm not unwell but hey let's give the twinings lemon and ginger a go I've just realized right now that it doesn't say lemon honey and ginger so hopefully it's not too tart hopefully it's not too strong but I'm gonna see how it feels how it tastes when I am not unwell cheers let's give it a go before we get into the Bible Mm. oh okay before I take a sip it is very fragrant I like that Yes, love it. I love a fragrant tea. Mmm, okay. Disappointingly weak. Disappointingly weak. Look, I think if I had a, if I had cold or something, I wouldn't even want, oh no, there's the ginger. I feel, I taste the ginger now. Oh, that's strong. That ginger is strong. The lemon isn't very strong, but the ginger is overpowering. My goodness. Mmm. Both of these flavors, ginger and lemon, tend to be quite overpowering flavors, but the ginger has seriously won out on this. I think maybe if I was sick, I'd enjoy this one. I think in the past, I must have enjoyed this one as a sick person before. But look, I would say, if you're healthy, stick to the other teas. When you're unwell, check out some twinings, get some ginger in ya. But enough of the brew, let's get into the Bible. I don't know if you've ever kind of considered this, but I think that sometimes God is a God of seeming contradictions. He is so vast and multifaceted that sometimes he appears to contradict himself. You see, he's holy, but he's willing to get in the mess. He's powerful, unfathomable, yet he's so close and intimate. He's a God of justice, and yet he's also a God of grace. How do justice and grace work together? Well, we see it in our scriptures today. And in Proverbs, as we get into it today, before we get into the justice and grace conversation, I mentioned this a wee while ago, but my favorite childhood verse, Proverbs 17, verse 22, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. I pray that your heart is cheerful today. All right, back to the talks on justice. I had to just as, I think as an adult, I've got different favorite scriptures, but as a child, that was, that was it. I was a positive, cheerful child, and I loved that scripture. 
But let's talk about justice. See, there is so much injustice in the world today. And the sad reality is that when there is injustice, it is evil that prevails. God is so passionate about justice. And we're going to read so much more about that as we get into more of the prophetic books in the Old Testament. He's passionate. In Proverbs 17, 15, it says, Acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent, the Lord detests them both. He's talking about unjust outcomes in court. When I'm guilty and I'm acquitted. When I'm innocent and I'm condemned. God detests that. It says in verse 23, The wicked accepts bribes in secret to pervert the cause of justice. Evil perversion for personal gain. God hates this. He's passionate about justice. We see God's heart for justice coming so clearly throughout the whole Bible, especially in, like I said before, the prophetic books. And we actually see this a little bit in Amos today. But we'll get to that. We'll get there. Let's go chronologically through our list of scriptures. You'll be able to see in the descriptions below as well. But in Romans, Paul speaks of the coexistence of justice and and grace. So if you've ever thought, how do those work? Romans, our passage today, is a helpful one to dig into. In verse 16, it said, the judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation. Judgment comes because of justice, because God is a just God. Actions have consequences. Sin has judgment. The price had to be paid. God is a God of justice. But the gift that followed many trespasses brought justification. That's what the scripture says. And the gift is grace through Jesus Christ. The scripture also compares Adam to Jesus. For if by the trespass of one man, Adam, death reigned through that one man, Adam and Eve's sin brought sin into the world and death to all of humankind. How much more, the Bible says, will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through one man, Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ. There's a a T on the end there. Justice existed and judgment was a necessary result. So grace was needed. The Bible in verse 20 says the law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. But I love this. Where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Sin was brought into the world through one man, Adam. Grace was brought into the world and into the equation by one man, Jesus Christ. And where sin is increased, so is grace. Justice and grace side by side, hand in hand, show the heart of God. He's a just God, but he's also a God of grace. And so in Amos, we see that that fierce passion of God as he declares justice to the poor and downtrodden. It can seem a bit wild, some of the things that we read in Amos, a bit alternative to the loving Jesus we know. But it's important as we read Amos, and I want to encourage you to remember this, that God is very slow to anger. In fact, I think that was in our scripture yesterday. He is slow to anger. By this point in the narrative of the Israelite people, God has given Israel chance after chance after chance after chance. And after consistently abusing the vulnerable, rejecting God time and time again, living in proud sin for generations, the time has come for judgment, for justice to prevail. This sounds harsh. And I, look, I stand by what I wrote, so I'm going to say it. Don't be so immature to read the judgment of God and think he is harsh and unloving. Allow this to be a reminder of his fierce heart for justice and and a great driving factor for you to carry a healthy fear of the Lord. Don't be so immature to read this scripture and see the judgment and justice of God as a God who is unloving. Allow this to be a reminder of his fierce love and heart for justice and a great driving factor for you to carry a healthy fear of the Lord. Justice is real, but so is his grace. All right, verse of the day, Proverbs 17 verse 19. Ooh, this is a good one. 
Whoever loves a quarrel loves sin. Whoever builds a high gate invites destruction. Be a person of peace. Don't love quarreling, it leads to sin. Someone needs to hear that today. Whoever loves a quarrel loves sin. Get that out of your life. Don't build walls. They don't protect, they invite destruction. Don't build walls of protection around your life emotionally, relationally, because ultimately what you're doing is inviting destruction into your life. What a great proverb. All right, well that's it today for The Daily Brew. Thank you so much for having me. I hope you're encouraged to meditate on our just God and our God of grace today. Justice and grace, though seemingly contradictory, hand in hand are a beautiful picture of God's fierce love and passion for people. Hey, if it's the start of your day, have a wonderful day. And if it's the end of your day, good night, sleep tight, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for day 201. We're in the 200s, people. Day 201 of The Daily Brew. We'll see you then.